because Saadi Carnot was interested in developing a theory of the perfect or the maximum efficiency of a heat engine, we're going to begin this exploration with looking at some very inefficient heat engines, specifically the early examples of steam engines, and explore why they were not a very efficient. The first practical steam engine was invented by an Englishman named Thomas Newcomen and was in operation by around 1712. The Newcomen engine consisted of a cylinder in which there was a piston and a, what is called a walking beam. Now the way the engine worked is that you would fill the piston, or fill the cylinder, excuse me, with hot steam this beam would expand, cause the piston to rise. And then at the end of the upward stroke, what we would do is we would inject a jet of cold water into this engine, causing the steam to condense, forming a vacuum. And then the atmospheric pressure would push down on the piston that would provide the power stroke and do the work. Now, if you think about this for a moment, you can see that there are a number of problems with this type of engine. The first problem, of course, is that the pressure on the power stroke cannot exceed that of the atmosphere working on a vacuum, or 14 pounds per square inch. The other limitation of the Newcomen engine had to do with the operating cycle. You were forced to heat up the cylinder and then cool it down. And the entire, each time you did a cycle, or an operating cycle of this engine, you were heating up and then cooling down the cylinder. This was a tremendous waste of heat and not very efficient. So it was the Scotsman, James Watt, who in the 1760s came up with the essential improvement on the Newcomen engine. In this engine, James Watt's engine, the condenser was a separate cylinder. Now remember, we injected a jet of cold water into this cylinder to condense the steam and form a vacuum. Now Watt's great innovation was to put a second cylinder next to the cylinder, and at the end of the upward stroke, when you wanted to form a vacuum and condense the steam, the steam would be admitted into this separate cylinder where it would be condensed, where it would form a vacuum. And then the atmosphere could again work on the top of the piston to deliver the power stroke. But Watt's great improvement was that this engine did not require the cylinder to be heated up and cooled down and heated up and cooled down with each power stroke. This was, of course, a great step forward, but we are still not close to achieving a theoretical maximum amount of work we can get from a steam engine. James Watt also invented another very important technology for the use of the steam engine, and that was the indicator diagram. You may have seen this in your uh, textbooks, but basically the indicator diagram consists of a XY plot with pressure on the Y axis and the volume x-axis, and we're going to talk more about that later. But the indicator diagram tells us what is happening inside the cylinder. The importance of the indicator diagram it will be explained during the course of your study of the Carnot cycle. But for right now, all you have to know is that the indicator diagram was created using a pressure gauge, a pencil, a moving cylinder, and some mechanical the indicator diagram was not used by Saudi Carnot, which is one reason why his Carnot cycle escaped the attention of scientists at the time it was created. The indicator diagram will be used extensively in our upcoming discussions.